spaghetti and meat sauce. So many of us make it millions of different ways. It really is a yummy tomato sauce with meat. But spaghetti bolognese, the bolognese sauce, which really hails from Bologna in Italy, has a few little characteristic points to it. And that's what I'm making today. It is one of my favorite sauces, whether you get it any way you get it, I love it. But what happens frequently in a traditional way that it's cooked is that it cooks for a very long time at a very low heat. And, you know, I don't always love to mess with tradition, but I have been known to figure out a way to get things done in a little bit less time with just as much flavor. So what happened with this particular recipe is my son called her coming home from college saying, I'm dying for spaghetti bolognese. And I look in the freezer, I have some ground meat, I have tomatoes in the pantry, and I think, okay, I'll make it. And I thought, ooh, it's not gonna have that long cooking time. So that's what I love to challenge myself with. What I'm doing here is getting my onion chopped. Now, technically, the recipe I wrote calls for half an onion. And as I was looking at this onion, I thought, yeah, I mean, half an onion, large, small, medium. Don't you always find that you're not exactly sure what people mean? So I wanted to show you today, I'm just gonna, instead of just cutting half the onion, I'm cutting the whole onion, and I'm gonna put it on my board, and then I am going to decide, once I get everything into my pan, how I like the ratio of the onion to the carrot to the celery. Because these are the three things that form the basis of the sauce. And not just in bologna or bolognese cooking, but in Italian cooking, you will see carrots, onion, and celery in a combination known as sofrito. And what it does is it just comes together. You've got what they call an aromatic, and that would be the onion. You have this root vegetable that brings a little sweetness in the carrot. And then the role that's played by the celery is that salt, a little, almost a little bit of acidity. And you bring all those things together, and th then you cook them for a long time. And that is the basis of this sauce, and so many sauces. In fact, in French cooking, it's called mirepoix, same thing. So in this case, I don't want big chunks of carrot. I'm just gonna carefully pay attention and get a nice, you know, slice here so that when I mince them, I have small pieces. Sharp knife, fingers curled under. Keeping those fingers tipped under will protect you from yourself if you're just learning how to cut. All right, so those are done. So again, thinly sliced, just like my other ingredients. And celery is in different sizes too. You can get a very thin, fine, usually if you buy it at a farmer's market, the celery's small but when you get it at the grocery store, it can be giant. So you have to use your own judgment when it comes to the ratio of ingredients sometimes. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I, I pretty much want equal parts. So I'm not gonna use all that onion, but it looks like I can get most of this celery in. And if you were putting together something like this and saving away ingredients, you can freeze your stuff until you need it. Just put it in a bag that says, you know, soup vegetables or something like that. So into this goes the oil. A uh, good amount of olive oil. You really want to coat this bottom. You want it to be hot enough, but not too, too hot. Mmm, hits the pan, smells great. All right, now I have the pancetta in the refrigerator. My refrigerator is always stocked with little tidbits that can help bring flavor to it in a dish. It's also stocked enough, so if I don't know what the heck I'm gonna make, I can nose around in that fridge and figure out something on the fly. So for this, I have my pancetta cut in a thick four ounce slice. Sometimes you buy it very, very thin, but for this, I want it thick, and then I'm cutting it in very, very thin strips, and then I'll chop it. So by the time it's all cooked down, it's got little teeny bits of flavor, and boy, Flavor is what I mean. Pancetta has extraordinary flavor. So now I'll see how our sofrito's doing. Oh, this is beautiful. Exactly what you want. It takes about 10 or 12 minutes, but you get a golden brown, a little bit of fond, that yummy flavor bits that are on the bottom of the pan, and that's where you really create your flavor base. Could I go a few more minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes? Would somebody in Bologna do that? Yes, but I'm a mom. I got to get dinner on the table, so I'm gonna cheat it a little bit. In the end, you'll still be happy. Now the pancetta goes in the pan, I'm gonna kick that flame up a little bit because last but not least in my bolognese slash meat sauce is the meat. So I have a pound of ground beef, 
and you want beef that has a little bit of fat in it. So you don't want perfectly lean sirloin. And then you're gonna get this in the pan and this cooks with the pancetta for about 10 or 15 minutes. And what's happening here is I'm gonna break it up. Now why did I raise up the heat? Because you put that meat, that cool meat in there and it's gonna reduce the temperature. And I'm gonna just start to break up the meat a little bit and let it mix with the other ingredients. It's gonna bring some moisture. It's going to bring a little bit of fat, and then it's all going to cook together. I don't need to get it super, super brown, but after about 15 minutes, it'll be where I want it to be. This bolognese sauce is quick, delicious, and happens to be at the perfect stage right now to deglaze. The vegetables have all but just completely shrunk. The pancetta and the meat has cooked out, the fat's rendered out, and there's beautiful brown bits and pieces on the bottom of that pan that carry so much flavor that I'm going to crank up the heat and deglaze it with about a half a cup of white wine. Now my friend who's from Bologna, she says use red or white. It depends on what you want in the end. And so for me it's not necessarily what I want, it's what I have on hand, so I encourage you to do the same thing. The red's just going to make a little bit deeper, richer sauce. So I'm going to take one second here and scrape up these bits because that's another big benefit of deglazing. And then it's gonna cook out. I want the alcohol to cook out a little bit, and I'm gonna season it with some salt and pepper. At any stage, you should really season your meat. Some people wait till the end to season, but I like to do it with the meat and a little bit of black pepper here too. And taste at the end and see if you want more. But when you have something like pancetta that's a little bit salty, you wanna make sure that you don't overdo the salt. In the end, you want the whole thing to be really balanced well with the seasoning. All right, smells superb. I turn this down just a bit because most of the wine is cooked out. And I have my can of plum tomatoes which always live in my pantry. I was at the grocery store yesterday knowing that I had canned tomatoes and worried that maybe I didn't have any at home. So I bought an extra one because how can it hurt? So I'm just going to pulse this a couple times. I want a little bit of texture. That's pretty good. That's why I do it because I like to control the texture in the end. Just make sure that this is all cooked off. I'll stick the tomatoes in here. It's a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. And sometimes I'll put a little water in here just to clean that out too, just to get every last bit of tomato. And then just stir it up. This whole thing right now is gonna cook for about 40 minutes max. Now one last thing, just to really put the bolognese in the bolognese, I am gonna put in some cream, about a half a cup of cream. Now, I said you could use red or white wine. You could use cream or you could use milk. And that's another thing that makes it quick and doable is knowing what you can substitute. Again, the point of it is you want some creaminess. You want a little bit of a pinkiness to this sauce. And that's what the cream is doing. But milk will do the same thing. And so would half and half if that's what you had in your fridge. And last but not least, a little pinch of red pepper flakes about a quarter of a teaspoon. Gonna bring a little bit of punch. I always like a little bit of punch to the sauce. And that's it. Water's boiling, you need lots of salt in your water. And then we just get the spaghetti in here. I cook it a couple minutes short of package instructions. Last but not least, in the true spirit of a bolognese sauce, I'm gonna put in a little bit of butter, just about, oh, a tablespoon and a half. It just mixes together at the end and gives an unctuous quality to the sauce, a little bit of a silkiness. It's not too much, but it really makes a difference. And then because I cannot wait and I have to check the seasoning, I have to just, ooh, that is the taste of happy. All right, the pasta is finished. I know that because I tasted a piece. So I'm gonna get it off and drain it. So I don't have a facial, I'm just gonna put my head back. Although if you want a facial, stick it in there. All right, shake it off. Now when I am planning how to do my sauce versus pasta ratio, it all depends. So, you know, if I'm sure I have the ratio right, sometimes I put the pasta right into the saucepan. But here, I have extra sauce, which is great because everybody's gonna want extra sauce. So in that case, what I do is just sauce it directly in the bowl. And I'll toss it a little bit and then people can have some on the side. That's great, just like that. I'll just grab my tongs. Now, just toss this a little bit. Another theme here has been 
Parmesan. So we have a little bit of Parmesan that I'm going to stick on top of our pasta. And in my house, we put this whole board with the piece and the board on the table and let everybody grate their own because there are certain members of my household that will, they'll just grate a huge pile as though it's a mountain of snow. And I'm not about to be grating that much just to get started.